It all started when Angela and her boyfriend, William, decided to go to the countryside to her friend Olivia's party. It was getting dark outside, and they were approaching the cottage village where they were going to spend the night. William, tall, pumped-up guy with sharp cheekbones, he worked as a swimming instructor at the swimming pool of the fitness center, that's where he and Angela had met. Angela was a student, a short girl with nice features, blunt hair, and a neat figure. A snub nose, bundled hair, t-shirts with prints, tight blue jeans, white sneakers, that's all about Angela. Along with her best friend Olivia, she does dance, moves great. Her best friend is Olivia. Tall, thin girl with long dark hair. Sucks about her appearance like a princess, thanks to the upbringing of her mother. Slim legs in leggings, boutique blouses, dresses to the hips. In general, the Smith family is well provided for, thanks to the work of her father, an entrepreneur. Olivia's mother, Mrs. Smith, is a housewife who has opened her own business. A flower store, not without her husband's help, of course. She spends a lot of time at home while her managers run her business. Mrs. Smith has always been quite a cheerful, cheerful woman with lots of girlfriends and perhaps even lovers. Of course, no one knows for sure, just that Angela had seen her a couple of times with strange young guys in her car. Not surprisingly, young guys have been hitting on her. At 42, she looks quite attractive, thanks in part to constant trips to beauty salons, tanning salons, and other places that women have taken advantage of in an attempt to preserve their youthfulness. If Mrs. Smith and Olivia walk side by side, a stranger looking at them from behind is likely to take them for friends. Mrs. Smith form, though slightly more plump than her daughter's, is still quite youthful and trim. Olivia's father is the founder of an automobile holding company. He is a broad-shouldered lump with a round face, a bald head, and a thick black mustache. Unlike Mrs. Smith, he is rarely at home, and understandably so, the workaholic. Angela and her boyfriend were on their way to the Levine family's country house. The father of the family had gone on a long business trip, and Olivia's mother, being a very understanding person, helped her organize a big party for her daughter. And then the story begins. Angela could not remember the end of the party with the cute guys from the student rugby team. She remembered several half-empty bottles of tequila on the coffee table, how she took a bath with her friend, how she came to the party with her boyfriend William, and introduced him to her friend Olivia and her mother Mrs. Smith. Then the girls from the economics department and eight guys from the student rugby team came. She remembered them sitting together in the living room and playing cards. She remembered dancing on the bed, how the pumped-up guy from the team molested her and how he pinched her. After that, William put up a fight with him, dragging him out into the yard in front of Olivia's parents' country cottage. She remembered Mrs. Smith treating everyone to an old daily that her husband had brought from Ireland. She vividly remembered the quarrel with her boyfriend and how Olivia's mother, worried about William's broken eyebrow, had taken him upstairs to put a compress on. She remembered the fun of the two guys wrestling in the hall and the guys betting on drinks. Her last memory was dancing with the cute boy on the team, holding her close and whispering some light vulgarities in her ear. She wanted William to be jealous, to show her how much he cared, that he cared, but he was gone and gone. She began to worry that he was getting sick, but in the end she was getting sick. Her body wasn't listening, amid dizziness and general weakness. Her thoughts were confused, but she was having fun, as if she had taken an antidepressant. The rest of the evening remained a blur. Angela opened her eyes, trying to figure out where she was. It was dark all around, her body felt kind of woozy, a little dizzy. A soft blanket, a pillow she had fallen asleep on the bed. Her thoughts were a little confused, and she wanted to get up, but the general weakness was so strong that she decided to lie down for a few more minutes to recover. From the sound of their breathing, there were other boys sleeping beside her, and more than one, it seemed. Was there not enough room for all of them? Angela felt a strange feeling on her chin. When she ran her tongue over her lips, she felt a thick, sticky liquid and a peculiar, salty taste. She instantly realized what was on her lips. It was a shock. Angela began frantically recalling the events of the evening. Could it be that one of the guys had done it when she passed out, or that she had done it to someone herself and had no recollection of it? Oh no, William. Ran through her head. Where's William? What if he saw it happen? The girl's heart quickened. There was still the possibility that it was her boyfriend on her lips. 
Her body was somehow woozy and insensitive. She stuck her hand under the covers, trying to see what she was wearing. As she touched herself, she realized she wasn't wearing anything. She realized she had been fucked, and there were two guys. Angela stood up on the bed. It was pitch black all around her. She got up from the floor, struggled along the wall, and stumbled across the table where the nightlight was. Rummaging through the wire with her fingers, she was able to turn on the lamp, and a dim yellow light illuminated the room. It was a small guest bedroom, I think on the first floor of the cottage. There were two guys lying on a double bed. One was sleeping on his stomach, sprawled out and almost sliding to the floor on the pulled down sheet. Pretty pumped up, a big tattoo on his back with some ancient symbolism. He was definitely on the college rugby team. Angela had only seen him a couple of times, but she recognized him instantly. The second guy, thin, black-haired, who looked like half a loaf of sausage, his name was Lucas, he was the boyfriend of one of the grandfathers from the economics department and lay on his back closer to the window. There was no doubt, these two guys were screwing her today. In general she was sympathetic to Lucas, but now she was too excited and even frightened to be happy for a moment that these were nice looking guys and not some thugs from the street. She put on her skirt, which was on the bed. No blouse was visible, and she carefully opened the door and slipped out into the hallway. The hallway was a shambles. Bottles everywhere, an overturned coffee table, someone's jeans on the couch. A girl, one of Olivia's classmates, was lying on a large, light grey rug. A half-empty bottle of schnapps stood beside her. She was dressed, her jeans buttoned up, and her wrinkled woman's jacket, though it looked less presentable, was still buttoned up. Her honor didn't seem to suffer today. To the bathroom, we must go to the bathroom. Angela tiptoed down the hallway, stepping over scattered bottles. Outside the door, water was pouring. Someone was taking a bath or fell asleep in the tub, which was also likely. Angela pulled the handle and the door opened ajar. Through the little crack, she saw something crazy. In the bathroom, near the sink, Olivia was kneeling. Her lipstick was smeared and her makeup was slightly smeared. Above her stood a young, lean guy in an unbuttoned blue shirt and with his jeans down to his ankles, and he was doing his thing. Olivia clearly didn't mind all this and looked at him with amorous eyes, gasping for air. Behind him, in the bathroom, there was another guy of medium build, short haircut, standing under the jets of water, peering at the fun of the couple. Eventually, the blunt guy pinned Olivia against the wall and just started moving his hips. The girl closed her eyes quietly accepting him. Suddenly he saw Angela standing outside the door, peeking in on their games. Hey, hi, the guy said, waving his hand for to get her inside. Come on in, we're having fun. He didn't seem at all concerned about getting caught. Olivia took a step away from the door. Don't be afraid, come in. I saw you with Tolia and Lucas, did it go well? He smiled, he seemed to be completely sober. Nightmare, I... Angela took hold of her head, I'll go. Her head was still spinning, her thoughts continued to muddle. What are you doing? He raised his eyebrows in surprise, it's been two hours since we slept together here. You didn't leave with the confused pranks, so why are you being modest? Angela stared at him in horror. Have you had too much to drink? Don't you remember how you were fucked by Lucas, Oliver, and Liam? What? Angela covered her mouth with her hands, horrified by what she had heard. You're really something. The guy grinned. Really don't you remember? We played cards for wishes in the living room. You lost and they wished you to please Lamb. They hinted at a massage or something and he made it even nicer. He didn't particularly resist, of course, but you were the initiator. No. Angela covered her face with her hands. For a second she wanted to fall to the ground. She didn't want to believe it. You're lying. I couldn't have done that. Angela's cheeks blushed. She was horrified by this story. So you did it. The blonde man threw up his hands. Olivia took a breath and listened to the conversation, looking at the frightened Angela. She wiped her lips with her palm and said, It's true, Angel, you made him feel good, then in the living room on the couch. Some of the girls left right away when they saw it. Well, you got the guys all wound up, and then you went with Lucas and Olivia to the bedroom. Angela just kept silent, covering her face with her hands, her head down, it was just unthinkable, she felt like she was asleep. Where was William? Did he see everything? She asked quietly. No. Olivia shook her head. 
I haven't seen him at all, all, all evening. Probably went to bed on the second floor after they put the bandage on him. Of course, it did not make her feel better, but at least he did not see it in person. The blond man stood silent for a while, thinking about something, and then he said, Look, don't be sad, I'm team captain. The guys are listening to me. I'll talk to them to keep their mouths shut. Liam will keep quiet, and so will Lucas. He won't benefit from it, or he'll lose the girl. I can't promise for Oliver, but me and the guys will talk to him. And the girls? They saw everything. They're Olivia's friends. She'll talk to them, right Olivia? I don't know, Olivia pressed her lips. I'll talk of course, but there are such gossips there. In a pinch they'll whisper and there will be new gossip, but my close friends won't tell anyone. Thank you. Angela looked hopefully at the guys, she still could not believe that she could do such a thing. What is your name? My name is Elijah, I keep my word. I keep my word. I'll talk to everyone, and I hope no one will crack. Thank you. Angela nodded. Have you seen William? I want to know where he is. Don't you dare tell him yourself. Max frowned. He's too big. You've got him. I saw him with Mrs. Smith on the second floor when she went to put a compress on him. Olivia got up from her knees and turned on the water to wash her face. Look in the bedrooms upstairs, he must be there. We lock the bedrooms from guests, if anything, the keys are in the locker in the hallway, on the top shelf. Angela washed her face and somehow cleaned herself up and went out into the long hallway. Taking the keys from the nightstand, she went in search of her boyfriend, sincerely hoping that he was sleeping peacefully on the second floor and would never know about what happened today in this house. Walking through the living room, she climbed the wooden, creaking stairs to the second floor. The door was closed. Apparently Mrs. Smith decided to lock herself away from noisy students. Picking up the right key, Angela entered the second tier of the cottage. At the end of the gloomy corridor a light was burning, which oozed out from under the closed door. Angela tiptoed to the entrance to Mrs. Smith's bedroom. From there came quiet, indecipherable sounds. The girl took a deep breath and quietly opened the door. In a large bright room, on a wide bed, on his stomach lay a naked William, handcuffed, chained to a metal headboard. Angela saw Mrs. Smith, who was leaning over William, standing behind him. Angela covered her mouth with her hands in horror at the sight of this. The woman suddenly turned her head and saw Angela standing at the door. She froze, looking at the girl anxiously. Everything inside Angela was pounding. She turned around and walked quickly down the corridor to the exit. Mrs. Smith did not catch up with her. The girl went downstairs, took her bag from the room where the two boys were lying and left, just left quietly. In her relationship with William, it was over. It said only one thing, always stay away from unreliable people and booze that's the story. Share in the comments. What do you think about this situation and the behavior of the characters? And thanks for listening to the story to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Have a nice day.